Action. Hi, welcome to Crash Course World History. I'm Brandon Hatch, and today we'll be talking about tea. The beverage that changed the world. Ooh, 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 Mr. Hatch, Mr. Hatch, Mr. Hatch. Why must you be careful of tea at night? Why? Because it might mug you. Oh, come on, me from the past. Don't joke about tea. Tea is a beautiful, precious, sacred thing. And now we'll be talking about the beginnings of tea. In his palace, Shen Nun is about to make the first pot of tea. He puts the pot of water on the fire. When he walks away, the wind blows tea leaves into the water. When Shen Nun arrives, he sees this beautiful creation. So what does he do? He takes a drink of the tea water. From his reaction, he really likes tea. As the old Chinese proverb says, better to be deprived of food for three days than tea for one. Mm. Now, time for Trevor with the Thought Bubble. Thanks, Brandon. The earliest credible record of tea drinking, according to Tom Standridge, the author of The History of the World in Six Glasses, dates back to the 3rd century CE in a medical text written by Hung Chua. Within the context, Chuao expresses several benefits of tea and its effect to the human body, in a positive way. However, according to Chinese tradition, tea was first brewed by Shen Nong, the second great emperor of China. Shen Nong uh, is said to brew the tea between 2737 and 2697 BCE in his lifetime. First, tea started through me medicine and religious. Then around the 1st century BCE, tea became a domestic drink and became a national beverage of the Tang Dynasty. Tea in Asia was very important to the health of the citizens due to its medicinal properties as well as its use in ceremonies across Japan and China. Everyone in Asia had a sacred love for tea, unless you are, wait for it, Mongolia. The Mongols. <laughs> Jumping to the United Kingdom. Tea was first introduced to the Portuguese priests and merchants in China during the 16th century CE. In the beginning, tea is a luxurious drink for the most powerful Brit figures in British society, such as Catherine Braganza. Catherine Braganza was the queen of the British Empire at the time of tea's rise to stardom, while also being a fellow lover of tea. Catherine was famed for her love of tea, and she even got fellow members of the English court to drink tea on a consistent basis. Tea was beginning to become the drink of any man, and its popularity in Britain grew. In the mills, there would be tea breaks. Tea would help sharpen the mind because of the caffeine content. As Tom Standage stated, tea kept workers alert. Tea was the lubricant that kept the factories running smoothly. This began the European adoption of tea. In the 1610s, the Dutch had adopted it. In the 1630s, it reaches France. In the 1650s, it hits Britain. Tea becomes popular in Britain during the 17th century. But by the dawn of the Industrial Revolution, tea becomes the most popular drink in the British Empire. And now off to tea time with Zach. Smoothie and tea was playing a huge part on the tea trade by reducing the sales of legal tea. The British East Indian Company had to owe the government one million pounds, so the company got the, go the government to intervene. The Tea Act of 1773 was a huge step back because of how mistreated colonists got. The American colonists boycotted British goods. When company ships arrived in America, colonists prevented them from unloading, and then this spurred the Boston Tea Party. The Boston Tea Party then ignited the Corsive Acts, which tried to show British authority, but only outraged colonists into the Revolutionary War. The Boston Tea Party, colonists dressed up as Native Americans and boarded the British ships. On the British ships, they unloaded 300 pounds or so tea into the harbor. 
now time for the open letter. And now an open letter to the Opium War. First, let's check our secret compartment today. We don't have a secret compartment today. Oh, a spoon. Representing silver. Silver is what Chinese de the Chinese demanded for European trade. This created a trade imbalance between the two, which led to the Opium War. Opium became illegal in 1729 due to its addictive nature. Although an illicit opium trade continued, and with the help of the company and British government, it was expanded. This was established to balance the trade between Britain and China due to Britain's love for tea. As the British East Indian companies searched for new ways to make a profit off of tea during the opium wars, they began searching for new alternatives for growing. The most suitable of these places was on the Indian-Chinese border. A vast number of tea plantations began to rise. When Indian tea became more popular than Chinese tea to European nations, Britain's thirst for control over India grew, which led to imperialism. In this episode of Crash Course World History, we're emphasizing on a specific beverage, tea. Tea became a beverage that united the East with the West, Britain with China, it inspired new innovations, such as the creation of noodles to manufacture tea, and started conflicts with countries over the distribution of it, such as the Opium War with, between China and Britain. Tea has inspired artists, enhanced religious experience, played a pivotal role in the emergence of world trade, and helped trigger major wars. No other drink has touched the lives of so many people in so many different ways. For Crash Course World History, I'm Zach, and I'm signing out. Thanks for watching. Be hatch out. This episode of Crash Course World History was directed by Trevor, Zach, and Brandon, written by Zach, Trevor, and Brandon, and with camera work by Brandon, Zach, and Zach's dad. Our history consultant for this episode was Mr. Murano, and our tea consultant was Zach's dad. Snacks were provided by Zach's mom, and our special guests by Zach's dogs. A special thanks to Zach's tub. Don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Don't laugh. Take over, alright? Overdo it. Redo it. Redo it. Redo it. You can't laugh. Don't laugh. You can't let your mustache come off like that. <laughs> <laughs> and you, need you need tinier steps. You need like... You need to walk how an Asian walks. This is not... You need to walk like how they used to walk. Wait on you. Oh, alright. Waiting on you. <laughs> or is it 18 seconds? And... <laughs> I didn't even throw it hard. Alright, don't... Are you gonna catch it? No, just don't... Ah, just, just don't like that, but die on my face. Alright. It's not focusing okay. now. Ask me again. You're bleeding? No. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ready? Should I swim across now? Yeah. Jumping to Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> ready? Ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.